addiction, which Carmen says is destroying her relationship with her husband, Will. Now, Carmen, I know that there's a, the hardest part for this has to do with you wanting a family. Tell me, tell me about that. Well, I knew what was the guy that I wanted to marry right when we met. He's the guy I want to have a family with, but... We're struggling with it because I don't want to bring a child into this world. It's like, into the addiction. Mm -hmm. And have them be an addict too and put somebody else through the pain that we've been going through. Mm -hmm. um, Will, where do you think this addiction began? Your addiction? Um, for me, I, I think it began at a very young age. I was exposed to it when I was like eight or nine years old. Exposed to what? To pornography explicit pornography, magazines, videos, uh, from my dad, actually. How old were you? I was eight. Um, I, I think through the years, it, it just progressed. It progressed from magazines to videos to the Internet. Having the Internet available, you know, provided almost an infinite source of, of content. The internet is like, it's like a, the, a blessing and the devil at the same time. Yeah. And I yeah. think we all know that one of the main reasons that the internet is used is for sex. So you don't want to be intimate with your wife. You would rather pleasure yourself than be with her. But I want you to tell me, Carmen, about the co-worker. He ended up lusting and kind of having like an emotional affair with this girl that he worked with. Tell me about the party. You went to the party and the co-worker was at the party. Well, she's actually, um, she was getting married. It was um, her bachelor party. Okay. She's, um, and uh, he told me he was going to a friend's house. Um, I said, love you, have fun, you know, call me later or I'll call you before I go to sleep. And that was it and I called him to try to get a hold of him before I went to sleep. And he uh, didn't answer and didn't answer and didn't answer. And I ended up calling his friend to see if he was, I could get a hold of him through his friend that he said he was going to his house. And he said that he hadn't seen him. So you went, you got in your car. So I got in my car. Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> so I got in my car and he was in my car and Drove around the parking lot, hitting the lock key because the light, lights flash, and ended up finding the bar that he was at. And I walked inside, and he saw me, and his eyes, you know, got heated. And you told and, him, you need to leave with me right now. And what did you do, Will? I stayed. I stayed. Um, she, she did ask me to leave. Um, and she's right, I, I had this. And you stayed with the woman? Yes, I stayed there at the bar. With the woman. Okay, so, Will, um, you say that going to school is, is like you started going to school again now and it's making it worse. It's making it worse, why? Why is school making your addiction worse? It just makes it worse being around uh, attractive women on a daily basis. And but that's just life, that's not school. I know. I know, it's just life. And, and I know sometimes you can't wait until your wife leaves the house, leaves the room, so that you can do your thing. Usually people are like, can't wait to come home. Honey, I'm home. Or, you know, honey, I miss you. You're like, honey, get out so I can... <laughs> um, Shannon, <laughs> this one's hard. And I honestly don't know if I was in a relationship like this, if I could stay. Now, I'm not telling you to leave your husband. I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm just saying this is, like, really serious. Yeah. Like somebody that wants to touch himself, and I'm like, hey, I got all this, and you don't want any of it. And this one is hard, but this one is also very typical of mm. sex addicts. This is, Will fits the stereotypical profile of a sex addict. He obsesses about sex constantly. He spends hours and hours a day, to the exclusion of everything else, thinking about it, planning for it. Um, engaging in it. Mm -hmm. He also is compulsive in his actions. He can't control whether or not he engages in his in his
particular sexual activity. So he, he routinely chooses his sex fix, so we say, if we're going to compare it to a drug, over real intimacy with a woman. And that's what's, what's so stereotypical about sex addiction is that it's fundamentally an intimacy problem. So mm -hmm. getting married isn't going to make it go away. Mm -hmm. So I know that, uh, Will, you said that you want to be able to watch a sexual scene in a movie and have control. You want to be able to be normal. How does he be normal? Or whatever normal is. Yeah. How does he have a healthy relationship with sex and, and a healthy relationship with his wife? It's a long haul. Um, he has an established pattern from the time he was eight. Will, you said you, your first interaction with pornography was when you were eight. An eight-year-old doesn't understand that there is intimacy and a relationship that should go along with sex. Mm -hmm. He just understands that there's a woman and this creates feelings in me and why it's not relieved. Like, like if the, the wife, you know, like just have sex with her or like why not, why is it not with her at all? Because it's not about her and it's mostly, a, it's, it's so wrapped up in his shame and now in his, in his feeling of not being able to control himself that mm -hmm. at this point he probably doesn't feel like he deserves to have sex with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult He's to have dirty, sex she's with a pure. real... There you go. Got it, it takes more effort to have sex with a real woman than it does with yourself and yeah. a fantasy woman, too. Got it. Well, Carmen, I know you're hurting, and I know you love your man, and he loves you. That's why you guys are here telling all your business to the whole world. Um, so we're going to get you guys some help. Okay? We'll be right back.